Hello, everyone. So my name is Vijan Ingram, and I will be discussing bridging gaps between personal and professional life to achieve my ultimate goals in science and in business. So the focus of my presentation will be highlighting my journey thus far regarding my upbringing, my goals, my career advantage, and various strategies that I'm currently doing in the process to achieve those goals, highlighting that my ultimate career goal will be in the field of brain health through the lens of cognitive neuroscience. So what even is cognitive neuroscience? So cognitive neuroscience is a field that combines neuroscience, psychology, and um, AI and computer science to help understand how the brain works, especially the cognitive aspects of our brain that will include thinking, rationality, learning, memory, perception, um, even sensation um, can be a part of that language, comprehension, attention, making choices, and the biggest dilemma of them all, consciousness. And these all help um, doing research and understanding how these various processes work also helps aid in neurodegenerative diseases. So what even is brain health? So this may seem common sense, especially to people in the scientific community, but brain health is basically a term that is all about positive mental health um, that goes from substance abuse um, from a psychological standpoint and also neurological conditions. And it is a determinant of overall health because our brain is our master organ after all. So it also is about improving cognitive function, um, resilience, and the state of well-being in which we can realize our individualities and also be able to cope with different stresses of life, whether it's physical stress or cognitive stress or psychological stress, and also how we can be more productive, work more efficiently and perform better, and, and ultimately through all of this, be better contributors to our society at large. So a little bit about my background. So I was born in 2001 uh, and I was raised in the Bahamas. I was born in Nassau, raised in Freeport. I have a bachelor's degree in business and I actually started my college journey in biochemistry. Now I'm a master's student of biology at Virginia Union University. And I also have certifications at other distinguished institutions in food and health and neuroscience and brain health and psychology and other few fields as well um, from other sources like LinkedIn, City, and a few other um, resources as well. Um, so my ultimate career and life focus, I, I'll be very concise and brief with it. So it, it is involved around how can I not only look at life to do one thing and also look at life as like, I don't wanna just be targeted not only one lead, but also into like one career title. Like I'm just going to be a cardiologist, for example, for the rest of my life. But I look at it of like, how can I be on the front end and the back end of what I'm doing? How can I be able to really impact people? How can I be able to lead and inspire other people while also being good at the craft that I'm doing? So that's where I would bridge the lens of business, the lens of psychology, and the lens of biology, specifically in neuroscience. So business and extracurricular adventures. So I was an athlete growing up. I did track, I did swimming, I did karate, baseball, soccer, all of those great things. And all those great things are good, of course, our health, cognition, um, learning about life, socializing, um, the, the resiliency, the discipline, all of those are very cool things. Uh, and I also founded a business th almost three years ago called Nature King Health. I had a lot of rebranding with that going on, but I now have a new um, marketing assistant as well. And so what I do with that is I do health consulting. I make a lot of health content on social media, specifically around brain and mental health. And I also have a shop available and I've also other cool things in the works. Um, so publication today. So I have done a lot of cool research so far um, through Virginia Union University specifically, um, but I haven't done a peer reviewed um, published journal as of yet. But outside of that, I have published seven books through Amazon and Barnes and Noble, all around topics of health in different disciplines. Organizations and causes. So one of the two organizations that I'm very esteemed to be a part of is Forbes BLK, which is a branch under Forbes magazine. And then also Society for Neuroscience, which 
I thank Dr. Ruffin for giving me the opportunity to join the organization, not only join it, but also join it um, at a discount. And I'm a part of Black Leaders Worldwide. Um, we have a new organization actually happening back in the Bahamas. You have Coral Vita, Water Keepers, Brain Expansion, all, it's many different groups that I've been fortunate enough to be a part of. Also, the MBL based in Richmond, Virginia, which is a business and community development organization um, where we find funding opportunities for small businesses and low income communities. So my main goals in science would be to advance expertise and knowledge to solve real world problems to adding value in the world, collaboration and research. Um, networking and also open access and sharing and not gatekeeping information. So why even neuroscience? So in a brief sense, I've been fascinated by how the brain works in all aspects, but specifically how the cognitive side of our brain works and how it ties in with molecular biology and how it ties in with psychology. Because psychology, I see it as a first step to biology and biology is basically like applied psychology, I would say. And then biology would be like basically applied chemistry and physics, and that's all applied math. So it's a whole loop I see it as. But this, the neuroscience, like how the brain works, especially from the aspects of consciousness, the as aspects of multi dimensions of intelligence that we possess as, as homo sapiens has been very profound to me. Um, and I hope as a species, we can continue to conduct research, collaborate all around the world and find answers to not only how the brain works in, in, in different capacities, but also how we can optimize it to um, the best capacities for each individual. So when it comes to career, for me, um, based off my work, I've been in the workforce for about probably five to seven years. Um, I, I would say more than that, but I had a lot of um, just family jobs and things like that. But I am networking, speaking to people, um, listening to mentors and that kind of thing. Um, you have to work on your skill set. You have to know your skill set, know what you're good at, know what you're not good at. And you have to be able to be competent in whatever that is you're doing or pursuing. You have to be a person who is able to adapt, able to change and able to create something new or be able to optimize whatever task that is that you are doing or pursuing. You have to have career advancement in mind. I don't think anyone should want the ideology of being stagnant in life. I feel like if you're in one place for 10 years, you should at some point try to pivot or reinvent what you're doing and try to always evolve. You always want to see progress in what you're doing. Um, and it can be small changes, but some change has to occur, especially over long periods of time. Um, I talked about adapting, networking opportunities, I wouldn't say like go to every single networking event because you don't want to you want to you don't want to go to everything and then it's so much information you leave with nothing. So you want to go to strategic events that you know will benefit you whether it's you know a certain individual will be there or you know they're talking about a certain topic or you know a certain company will be there. Be very strategic and very um, discerned about networking, but networking is pivotal because it's about who you know and who knows you as well, um, especially in a professional. Um, world and in almost any industry. Um, and then maintaining professional standards, of course, you have to be approachable, you have to be appropriate, you have to be intellectual, and you have to dress well. Um, image is very important. And then you have to know your gaps, like know your weaknesses, as I talked about earlier. Um, so why is having career goals important? I will talk about how it's important to me and also why I think it's important, should be important to the general public. So it helps, having goals in life generally give you a sense of direction and focus, which can make you have something to look forward to, which ties in with motivation here. Um, but motivation is a little bit deeper um, outside of that because motivation allows you to have something so deeply and so dear to your sense of purpose as that ties in there that makes you wanna get up every day. Sense of purpose meaning that it's something in this world that you know I'm good at something or I'm knowledgeable about something. And I see a group of people or I see the world at large needs this and I can add that value and better society as a whole. So it's all about finding what you're good at, 
finding what you're passionate about and service and tying that into your sense of purpose. Um, it helps with your development as a person. You meet a lot of people, you, you learn a lot of new things, um, you develop a lot of skill sets. Um, and then having goals helps aid your career advancement because if you don't know where you want to go, you'll just be every and anywhere doing anything. And not only that, you'll probably not feel motivated or purposeful or feel like you have any direction whatsoever, but you'll also feel like you're not going anywhere and not advancing. It may not, I'm not just talking about advancing in a paycheck, but advancing in terms of your rankings, your leadership status, your impact, and um, your skill set and intelligence as well. So careers in science, you have academia careers and industry careers are usually the top two you will hear, but you also have government. You can work for a government agency, you can work in government laboratories, you could do research um, for, the, for the government. Um, nonprofit means that you rely solely on grants um, and, and loans and funding only because it is no selling of any products or services done in that regard. And then you have entrepreneurship where you can create your own product or create your own service as well. Or you can do an industry career and entrepreneurship. An industry can, career is basically like where you'd be working at like, for example, a Neuralink and an academic career is where you'd be like a, a faculty member at say Virginia Union University, for example. So building foundation um, I think is extremely important and, and becoming an overall well-rounded individual. Um, formal education and training is important. Having research experience is important. Um, having work experience in general because you may have your degree in papers, but then they want to see have you actually been practical in what you're doing so that when you go through the training process on the job, people won't have to start from scratch with you. And, and if you're on the other end of the stick where you're the one hiring, you would prefer to hire someone who you could see fully in front of you things that they've done and things that they've acquired rather than someone who has but just solely potential. Um, skill development, um, you have to work on your hard and your soft skills. You have to be able to speak. You have to be able to give presentations. You have to be able to have emotional intelligence. You have to be able to lead teams or, or, or if not so, be able to collaborate with others. And then hard skills, um, you got to know how to do it, conduct an experiment and um, for, for example, or, or know how to teach a, a lecture or a lesson. Mindset and habits, you have to have a mindset of, of optimism. You have to have a mindset of, I can do anything I put my mind to, I'm gonna stick to it no matter how hard it gets. And then habits are the thing, the actions as a result of that mindset that you set. Um, effective networking, I spoke about earlier, having defined um, concise goals. You don't want to just have a goal and say, I want to be a billionaire. You have to be specific about why you want to be a billionaire, how you're going to be a billionaire, and what is going to lead you to that path, and what steps would you have to take to get to that type of status. Um, for example, um, you utilize various platforms like social media is big now, AI is big now. Um, utilize those organizations, um, join, um, um, I would say, great organizations specifically to your fields of interest. So me personally, I've joined, I've told you about some of them. Most of them are based around either health, um, science, neuroscience, or business. And then mentorship and teaching. One part, uh, I mean, teaching is good for many regards, but teaching also helps improve your memory. And that's been proven because it allows you to recall information a lot more and you tie an emotion to it because you know you have to remember it to be able to share it with someone else. And also being taught to is also obviously important because sometimes it's better to have a teacher, obviously, than to just read the information in a book by yourself. Mentorship is important because it's good to have people to guide you along your journey and you can mentor others as well. Open communication, be clear and concise about what you want. Ask questions if you don't understand something or you need help with something. Um, leadership, it's important to be a good role model, um, set a good example um, with your actions and not just solely your words. And lifelong learnings, I know school doesn't stop after you get your degree, uh, no matter how high your, how high your degree is. Um, you have to learn for life, especially in the field of science and, and business, because things are going to forever change and evolve 
Um, and there's a lot of things still that still need to be discovered. So my business is called Nature King Health. It was founded back in 2021, where we focus on neuroscience and human biology and how we can um, optimize people's brain health and mental health by delivering education, um, solutions and value for brain power and health optimization. So the vision I constructed was to be able to change human lives for the better, helping people with innovative solutions to improve their brain and body health based on neuroscience. So the mission is to provide health solutions for the brain and body because a happy life begins with a healthy body and a healthy mind. So tying it all in, work-life balance is extremely important because I'm talking about brain health, but in my pursuit of a career in brain health and I'm also business and, and, and um, neuroscience, I also have to take care of my own as well. So strategies I put together for managing stress and avoiding burnout is to be set boundaries, whether that's with work or whether that's with people or whether that's even with yourself. Have good time management, learn how to say no, develop positive coping strategies. And for example, alcohol and don't always resort to alcohol for many reasons beyond brain health. Um, seek support if you need it, um, wherever that comes from, make sure it's healthy support. Um, make sure to take breaks, rest when you need to, um, nap when you need to. Studies have shown that na day naps can be pretty effective. Um, make sure that you prioritize wellness activities. Make sure you exercise. Make sure you practice mindfulness and meditation. Make sure you have quality sleep. Sleep is the number one pillar of health. Um, you can go without uh, many other stuff longer, but if you go without sleep for two days, you're basically... Um, brain dead, I would say, um, in a joking way. Um, then you have good nutrition, of course, and then positive relationships and social connections. So this picture here is me um, working with um, a specimen using their um, microscope. This is at Bonaventure Lab in Freeport, Grand Bahama. Um, I was actually volunteer. I was there for three months back in the summer so I was just volunteering at many organizations related to health and um, and medicine. And they do um, a lot of um, like patient services mainly. Um, for example, if someone needs um, a bl like blood work or needs a physical, um, and they also work with a lot of medical providers and, su and suppliers um, island to island and connecting to the US to be able to ship in products needed for all type of stuff. So I was helping them um, dealing with their patients as well. Here is um, me at the Coral Vita farm. So on the left-hand side of me is, his name is Sam Tetcher. He's the co-founder and the CEO um, at Coral Vita. I, I believe he's currently in Miami right now, um, but he's big into environmental health. I believe he got his bio bachelor's and his master's in environmental science and biology. Um, on the right of me is Alana Velicott. She's all she's a um, marine marine biologist. Um, and the rest of them there. I don't know them too well, but um, I know they all um, are, love biology and love work in the farm. But basically, the core mission of Coral Vita Reefs, um, they're located in the Bahamas on the island of Grand Bahama, is to maintain, restore, and create coral reefs um, because coral reefs are very important. Um, because they're a habitat for marine life and we need marine life, but they also help with global warming. They also help um, with environmental health and they also help as barriers for hurricanes and different things like that. So they're very, very important for our ecosystem. So this is me at Virginia Uni working in the lab under the supervision and mentorship of Dr. Ruffin, who was our principal investigator, um, where we were doing a protein analysis um, report. Um, so we so this here process I was conducting the gel electrophoresis process. Um, I was making some notes there, um, which is pretty cool um, to conduct. Here was in Grand Bahama again working with water keepers. They're all they're also similar to coral vita reefs, but they focus more on mangroves and not coral reefs. But I was helping them collect um, proper gules. They're like basically seeds. Um, for mangroves um, that we will, we collected, I believe, all together, it was about 10 of us together, we collected about 5,000 that day. I collected probably 700 um, in my bag. 
um, when we were out there in the mud in the swamps doing the dirty work. Um, but I, I was proud to volunteer. Um, I, of course, kept me productive and busy during the summer um, while I was visiting for those three weeks. Um, this is here. So I also, outside of everything I do, I'm a actor, I'm a model, and I'm the current Mr. Bahamut for the past three years, actually. I represented the Bahamas in Thailand, um, and I'm going to represent the Bahamas in Colombia in about a month and a half. Why I put this part of my life on here is to showcase the diverse array of talents and transferable skill sets, but also the powerful effects of networking and visibility and exposure and through traveling the world, meeting different people while also being able to represent my country and make a living um, through other means of income as well. And here um, I'm wearing my Nature King health shirt. So I also, like I said, the educational part of it is why I create free content that's access accessible on LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, all over um, through my Nature King page mainly. I sometimes side in with my personal um, page. Um, I was talking about sodium channels um, between neurons, so there's a presynaptic and postsynaptic um, neuron. And then on the postsynaptic neuron, that would be the dendrite, as you see there. And it just talks about like how if it's more, it's usually more sodium outside of, I mean, yeah, sodium outside of the cell and potassium inside of the cell, and it has to change um, for action potential to be able to spark. And then as you can see here, the vesicles, which are proteins that are moving um, along the microtubules. Um, and in those vesicles are other proteins, usually neurotransmitters. I don't know which specific one I was talking about here, um, but let's say, for example, is dopamine um, in a dopaminergic neuron. Um, and you can see that it's opening and it's transporting along the synapse. Um, to be able to simulate um, a dopaminergic response. Here is where I do, um, so I do many things at the Metropolitan Business League and also Bridging Virginia, but a part of that is our YAP program, Youth Entrepreneurship Program, basically where we work with kids on developing business ideas and also finding their purpose and meaning in life. And here I'm teaching them about collaborating on Con constructing a business based on each of their individual talents. And they all at the end presented what they came up with. And it was all in a matter of like 20 minutes. So they did very amazing. And this last slide here was actually pretty recent. So I was invited to VCU by um, someone I know, and I had ordered a bulk order of books um, prior, and I just had brought my books in a suitcase. And some of them I sold, some of them I gave out because many students didn't have the $20. So I just gave out a bunch of books. And this is my book here, Mind Power. My latest published book is available online everywhere. And the book talks about improving our brain, improving our health and expanding consciousness and also optimizing our life. And you can see the VCU students here. Some of them are on the VCU programs and activities board, as you can see here. And I'm wearing my Nature King merch. Um, but they all were excited to receive the book and they all were delighted that I was there and showed up. So you can scan the QR code here. If you have any questions or inquiries, you can scan the QR code and reach out to me. Um, you can book a meeting, email me, um, engage with my posts on social media. And you can find me on LinkedIn, Bajan Ingram. And you can find my email. Um, you can use my